If you guys enjoyed recording journal entries in financial accounting, then you're going to get a bit of a break here because we're going to be looking at the cost of goods manufactured statement, which we looked at last time. And we're going to be journalizing the usage of items like direct materials or costs like direct labor, manufacturing overhead incurred, and also journalizing transfers between work and process inventory and finished goods, plus more. So I've got a bunch of items listed on the left hand side and we're going to journalize each of these along with keeping the T account balances for each account. So let's start off by starting with the first one. The first one says that we have purchased $2 million of direct materials. So our direct materials account is going to increase the inventory of the, our materials account by $2 million. So we're going to debit that and then we're going to be crediting accounts payable or cash depending on whether we're using credit or cash. Two million dollars, I should write a comma there. And I'll also create the T account. So T account for, I'm going to abbreviate it as a DM, direct materials. Two million dollars on the left hand side for a debit and accounts payable I'm going to include accounts payable or cash as the same thing in this tutorial which is just going to be a credit of two million dollars since we used that much so we finished the first one pretty easy second one is we requisitioned 1.8 million dollars of direct materials for production so that means that the direct materials are actually going to go towards production, which means it's going to be a part of work in process inventory because anything that's contributed towards production will be work in process. And work in process is inventory, so since we're increasing inventory, we're going to be debiting the accounts. So we're going to debit work in process. After this, we'll just abbreviate it as WIP or WIP, and that's going to be for $1.8 million. And we're going to be crediting direct materials because, of course, the balance is being reduced by $1.8 million since we're transferring that, that inventory to work in process. So we're just converting it from one to another. So I'm going to credit direct materials by $1.8 million. And I'm also going to go down here and create a work in process T account since I want to leave the right side free for any work. Uh, so debiting $1.8 million in work in process. Okay, second one is complete. Third is the direct labor cost of $15,000. So this is a little bit tricky because the labor cost normally you would say wages expense and then wages payable for a credit. But the thing is, the wages expense, if we were to report that, that would be a period expense on our income statement and would not be cost of goods sold. And we want it to be a cost of goods sold expense because, of course, the labor is part of the cost of inventory. So we need to capitalize it as part of inventory specifically work in process because it's contributing to the production of goods. So work in process will be debited for $15,000. It's probably a really low amount. I'm not sure why I came up with that number, but it's $15,000 and we're going to be crediting wages payable because uh, we have yet to actually pay them yet. So $15,000 will be credited there. And I'll also go down here and say $15,000 as a debit and work in process and create a new T account for wages payable, which is going to be $15,000 of a credit. So we finished the third one. Fourth is overhead incurred. This is also kind of tricky. Now the overhead incurred, it's kind of the way it's tricky is that the incurred amount is not actually known until the end of the year. Normally what we'll do is we'll budget 
our, our overhead and then we're going to apply it. So the applied amount is our budgeted amount. So the incurred, even though we're gonna report this first, it's actually gonna be done at the end of the year because we apply overhead before we figure out how much overhead expense we've incurred. So we're actually gonna be debiting manufacturing overhead account for four hundred thousand dollars and you'll kind of see why i'm debiting it in a second and we're going to be crediting cash or accounts payable or any other accounts that we've used for the overhead amount so and that'll be four hundred thousand dollars and i'm going to list the manufacturing overhead actually I'll probably list it a little bit further down manufacturing overhead I'll just say MOH and then I'll write four hundred thousand dollars as the debit balance and cash AP will be a four hundred thousand dollars credit okay so we've incurred the four hundred thousand dollars of overhead and now the overhead applied this is where we actually apply it to the work in process. Now I said this is normally done first. We, we apply the overhead first and then at the end of the year we figure out how much has actually been incurred. So this is at the end of the year even though we're journalizing it first. So it makes sense to debit work in process for the overhead applied since we're budgeting or estimating how much overhead there's going to be and then we're going to apply it to the work in process as it's another cost of our production. So it'll be debiting work in process and then we're going to be crediting manufacturing overhead account. So that will be for $350,000. And when we actually credit that over on the right hand side here we can see that there is a clear difference between the manufacturing overhead that has been incurred and that we've budgeted or applied for which means that since we've only applied 350,000 we under budgeted the amount so we're actually going to have an under applied amount of $50,000 in the end 50,000 under applied. That's what this means. And then I can add the $350,000 to the work in process. $350,000. So we finished that part. If you understand that part then you're doing well because of course that part is very tricky. $2 million of work in process inventory transferred to finished goods. This is really simple. We're just transferring it to finished goods inventory, which is another inventory account. So we're gonna debit the inventory since it's increasing and we're gonna be crediting work in process for $2 million. And then $2 million on the credit side. So I'm gonna put $2 million, whoops, accidentally clicked something that I shouldn't have, 2 million and then finished goods. Well, we don't have a finished goods T account. You can see how time consuming all of this is. Uh, but I love doing it. It is my job or my job on the side. <laughs> uh, finished goods is going to be $2 million as a debit. And then the last one is the sales of the finished good inventory. I'm actually just going to clear this so I can actually write the last one since I don't want to write it all the way down there. So the seventh one is going to be the sales of $4 million. So we know that if we make sales, they're either cash or accounts receivable. So AR or cash. And then we're going to have sales of $4 million. $4 million. And then we're also going to have to report the cost of that inventory. So cost of goods sold, which is 1.9 million. And then we also have to say 
uh, finished goods inventory being credited since that amount or the balance of that account is decreasing. 1.9 million. So let's just finish this all off. 1.9 million. So we have an ending balance and finished goods of 100,000. Cost of goods sold is going to be a 2 million, or not a 2 million, but a 1.9 million dollar balance. And the sales error cash will be, what is it, 4 million? So the cash, $4 million. And then the sales, finally, will be $4 million as well. Sales, $4 million. And you should always keep T accounts just since it's a good idea to watch uh, the posting of all transactions to each account balance. So hopefully you understand all of that. I'm actually going to be talking about what happens to the overhead applied or under applied amounts in the next tutorial and how we're going to either write it off or how we're going to prorate it towards inventories which is a little bit complex but hopefully you'll have the energy to keep up i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching if you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos you can tweet us at note pirate you can like us on facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped and like always thanks for watching us on youtube